In this video, we're going to be printing miniatures with an FDM printer, the Bamboo A1 Mini to be exact. I want to show you how good the quality is of these FDM miniatures, especially for D&D or Warhammer miniatures. There's no more need for that nasty resin printer if FDM is printing this good. So let's get started and I'll show you how I print detailed miniatures with just an FDM printer. Just to reiterate, I'm using the Bamboo A1 Mini. This is probably the most user-friendly printer to get started in this hobby. It's great for printing small objects, so I figured, let's get some miniatures printed. Just for clarification, I'm using eSun PLA Plus as my filament. It's a great quality filament for a decent price, and I've had great success with it so far. I'm using a 0.2 millimeter nozzle instead of the default 0.4 nozzle. This makes higher quality miniatures when compared to the 0.4 nozzle. However, your print time will increase. If quality goes up, so does print time. So we've got our 0.2 millimeter nozzle on, and we have our PLA plus filament loaded. Before we load up our print file, I just want to go over the settings I'm going to use in my slicer. These settings I found from a video by the channel name Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. Go check them out if you want a detailed explanation behind these settings. They're a great resource for all things related to FDM printing miniatures. Go ahead and change the settings to match the highlighted portions shown here and here. Now in this video, I want to focus on models being printed with supports and models that are designed to be printed without supports. If you plan on printing models with supports, you're going to want to tweak those settings. I've came up with these settings for easier to remove supports. Supports will be set to auto for automatic creation and make sure they're set to tree. So now that we got settings taken care of, let's load up our test model of a dwarf rifleman. This model was created by Bright Minis and is designed so no supports are needed on an FDM printer. Please check out Bright Minis. They offer a lot of free D&D models, and they're all designed to be supportless. All the D&D figures seen in this video are from Bright Mini. Now that the file is loaded, we can see it as a 3D model in our slicer. We're ready to slice the model and prepare to print. Even though we have the support setting on, the slicer will determine if the model actually needs support for a healthy print. Like I mentioned before, these models are designed to be supportless. We can see here no supports are shown, everything looks good, so let's hit print. This print will take roughly 70 minutes to complete. Once it's done printing and cooled, we can remove it from the print plate. Let's take a close look at our final product. Some slight cleanup is needed, but it's very minimal compared to resin. Now, I want to compare the same print with the primed mini. I primed this one with Rust-Oleum spray primer, nothing fancy. I'm very happy with this result, so now I want to show other models I've printed with the same settings. Next up, I want to show a supported model, which is probably the most commonly printed. Make sure you've enabled supports. If you did the same support settings I showed earlier, then the supports will be removed easily. I recommend a clipper tool to assist. So now that I've shown you how I print miniatures on the Bamboo Mini, I want to show off some of my prints. I'm very impressed with the quality of the D&D minis, especially the skeletons with their small detailed bones. I've done several Warhammer prints in one solid piece, and I've done prints in multiple pieces where you have to glue them together. My solid prints usually come out with a small cleanup needed, but overall I'm very satisfied with how they come out. Prints that are broken up into pieces usually come out with a cleaner quality, but it all depends on what you're printing. I'm very satisfied with this printer and excited to see how much better FDM printing gets for the miniature hobby.